Hi. So I've spoken at length as to why it is I don't fix iPhone boards. Uh, a, you usually make less money fixing iPhone boards than you do fixing other types of boards. And B, the customer base on average is just a little bit more out of their mind, for lack of a better way to put it. I'm not saying that iPhone owners are bad people. Not by any means. I know a lot of people that own iPhones that are very nice, kind-hearted decent people. The issue is when you go to fix a cell phone motherboard in the, in the modern world, people expect that it be done instantaneously. And if anything occurs, anything at all that stops it from working instantaneously, they need an instantaneous repair or they will absolutely lose their mind. So whereas with my business, with the, with the MacBook board stuff, I can tell somebody one to two business days, and they're totally okay with that. But if I tell somebody it will take one or two business days with a phone, they start to lose their fucking mind. And also, there's less money to be made per repair on average using the same skill set, the same microscope, the same soldering equipment, working on smaller components that are more annoying, you actually make less money. And there's, there's this great example that came up recently, and I hate I don't. I I kind of hate to use Jessa as an example here, but like th this is one of the things I talk about in a lot of these videos. Is one of the worst things that another store can do. The worst thing that another repair shop can do is be a customer when they're getting a wholesale price on a repair from a repair shop. So, you know, for example, I had one person send a phone in uh, some other store, and they said. About after they called after four days asking for status, and we told them what we had to order for it. Then they decided to call another four days later. So at this point, the phone has been here for eight days, and they said, "The phone, we've had a phone with you for a month. We want to know what's going on." And they said it with that attitude. So a, you extended the time period, so you turned eight days into thirty-one days, just like like magic. And b, you said it with an attitude. And at that moment, I we, we literally we took it, we took all the little pieces, we wrapped it in bubble wrap without reassembling it, and we mailed it back to them. Like n that was that. Because as soon as you ask, start a as soon as you start acting like a quote unquote customer when you're being given a wholesale business relationship price uh, setup, then then you've got to go. And this is something that's really important for a lot of you guys who are watching my videos, who are doing service for other computer repair stops or other cell phone repair shops that, that don't know how to do these repairs. You need to understand something very, very importantly. Uh, they need you, the other stores. You do not need them. What you want are retail customers walking in. You want people who went to the Apple store and were told 400 bucks to replace your phone and were erasing your data. And then they come to you and you say two or three or whatever and you get all their stuff back and fix their phone. You want customers who went to the Apple store who heard 750 or 1250 to fix their motherboard problem. You don't want people who are going to call you seeing that there's some board on eBay that may be fixable that's selling for 200 and ask you to do a repair for 100 bucks. Because the thing is, the stores are at, very often they're going to be worse than the retail customers and they'll want a discount. And if you don't believe me, you can just go over to this video that Jessa did recently. It's an amazing video on a very common problem with the iPhone 6. You look at this over here and uh, there's this one message when you scroll down. Why didn't you tell everybody about the iPhone 6 you claimed to fix for Robert but stopped working again? Why don't you also tell everybody that you refused to give him his money back? Blah, blah, blah. And here's the thing that really gets me about this. Like, Jess is the type of person, and when people say things like in that comment, the prices are astronomical. A, the cheapest board repair that I offer to a wholesale customer costs way more money than most of the crap that Jess is doing here. I am frequently yelling at Jess for, for her pricing. Uh, but secondly, the really thing that gets me here is when I get a board that I see somebody has fucked with or ruined something on, I don't touch it at all. I put it in a box, I invoice them for shipping, and I say, you started, you finish. I don't fuck with shit where other people screwed it up because within a no-fix, no-pay model, what's going to happen is I am going to try to fix this. It's less likely to be fixed because an idiot destroyed it, and then I will not get paid. In order to do this, you have to have a price that is set very high because a lot of stuff is not going to be fixable because an idiot touched it. And in this case, an idiot did touch a lot of the phones that were sent to her. Robert sent a lot of phones in that were fucked. Like they just, just You could see that people just knocked shit off the board and did stupid crap. And then instead of it being a five-minute repair, it turns into a one-hour repair. 
And can you imagine the insult, how insult turns to injury when that repair that's now an hour is a repair that is not, that, that is something that cannot be fixed because of how badly it was destroyed by the first person who touched it. And when you do all that work for free, that this is what you get on the internet. So again, like this big warning, if you see that a repair shop is starting to touch the motherboards that they are sending you I, at all, put it in a box and send it back to them. If you fix phones for customers and you fuck up something, uh, don't then, you, what you're supposed to do there is you're supposed to replace that phone for the customer whose phone that you then destroyed. If you know in your heart and your mind that you destroyed it, if you tried to solder and fucked with the motherboard and you're not qualified to do it, Replace the phone. Don't send that phone off to the one person whose job it is to fix the fuck-ups of other repair shops. The one person who is out of their mind enough, no offense, Jess, who is absolutely batshit crazy enough to try to fix all these little fuck-ups that all these people who are not qualified to work on phones make. And then get pissed off when it can't be done inside of, of an hour. Like, really. And here's one of the things that I want to discuss when it comes to this type of business. So when it comes to warranty issues, I would say 99.999% of the time, when somebody calls me and says, hey, you fixed something and it's not working, I'm not going to say, I'm sorry, here's all your money back. No, what I'm going to say is something like, okay, I'm sorry to hear that. That really sucks. Let me set aside a time when I'm probably not busy with other things so that you can come by so that I can try to get this resolved for you as quickly as possible. I apologize, but let's see what I can do. And I work with the person back and forth. And very often, that's very easy to do. Sometimes it's hard to do. And sometimes sometimes you just kind of genuinely fuck up over and over again, and it, it, it sucks. But for the most part, it's something that you can work back and forth with. But here you have a situation where somebody who... Again, clearly needs Jessa more than Jessa needs them is not only irid not only demanding a refund on something that for all that, that that there's literally no proof that doesn't work. Like there's not even proof that this phone wasn't dropped again by the customer. Uh but is actually publicly shaming the person who fixed it. And again, this is what I would call quote-unquote customer behavior. When you're dealing with a retail customer, this is totally acceptable, standard, I would expect this type of behavior. But when you're dealing with a wholesale business, this is not acceptable behavior. It's just like, again, you're being a customer. And I would say that the worst thing that you can do in business, the worst thing that you can do is be a customer when you're dealing with your business-to-business -business relationships. You can be a hard ass, you can be a business person, but the last thing that you should ever do is become a customer. I've talked a lot about the business that I used to outsource board repair to. I've talked a lot about the business I used to buy parts from. I did a 30-minute video on the process of how I broke up with that business and everything that happens over the course of five or six years while I was dealing with that business. I never gave you the company name. I never publicly shamed them. I never acted like a customer. Uh, and that's with a business where, like, again, there's a lot of history back and forth there where I have some right to be a customer. And I just want to make sure that everybody out there who's the real point of this video is to ensure that the people who are graduating practical board repair school, the people who are watching these videos and offering wholesale services to other stores, I want you to understand something very loud and clear. These people need you more than you need them. So stores that cannot fix iPhone boards, stores that cannot fix laptop motherboards, stores that cannot do this stuff that outsource it to you, please understand, again, they need you. You don't need them. Your services are in more demand than their services are. So never let this bullshit get you down. Again, when it comes to people like this, like, I would be ashamed of the fact that I even have to send this crap out to begin with rather than be at a point where I'm like going to publicly attempt to, to bitch about stuff like that. And again, I, for all you know, it, it probably is one of those really sad situations where the stars aligned and the shit just failed again out of nowhere. But again, there are ways to deal with your business-to-business -business relationships. And when I see shit like this, what I see is a person that nobody is ever going to want to deal with in a business-to-business -business relationship. Nobody who fixes iPhone motherboards is going to want to deal with, with, with John Rivers. Nobody, and it's just... 
It's just something to think about. Like, even at the height of a relationship where somebody was, like, making up fucking bills, um, reheating graphics chips, uh, like, just, like, sh- just sending me shit that had fucking liquid damage on at the height of the most bullshit relationship I've had in all the years I've been in this, in this business of Mac hardware repair. I never gave the name of the company. I never publicly shamed them. And, and and this is me we're talking about. I mean, you know, like I I I love nothing more than crapping on people who screw me over. But you have to understand that the, the, there's just some, this, it's like an unspoken bond when it comes to business business relationships. Again, you can you can stop doing business with them. You can do all sorts of things. But there's a protocol that you go through before you get to that point. And the whole idea that if something doesn't work the first time it's received back, that you want an instant refund on that type of work rather than warranty service on the first job. It's like, no. And, you know, I was saying, like, even for retail customers that paid retail price, this is probably not something that I would do. And a wholesale store expects this. A shop expects this, like a shop as in a shop that has, because that's the thing, customers are going to deal with the shop in a certain way. So the shop is used to dealing with this shit day in and day out. So I don't understand how it is a shop can then start inflicting this onto other people. Like I'm used to dealing with impatience all day. I'm used to dealing with entitled nonsense all day long in the in this neighborhood that I'm in where there's just a bunch of people that just... They, they, you know, they, they, their, their parents will help them if their Chase account drops below eight thousand dollars. That don't really. I'm used to dealing with people that don't understand the idea of disappointment or hardship or work. So when I, like, there's this little taco place that I go to every now and then by my apartment, and sometimes they'll be really busy and there'll be a lot of people in there and there'll be people the orders calling off the hook and everybody will be bitching. Where's my food? Where's my food? Where's my food? Excuse me, you didn't take my order yet. I'll walk in and they'll look at me and I'll go. I'll be back in 10 minutes. I walk around the block. I come back. They're still busy. And I go, how's it going? And they go, oh, I'm sorry. I'm take your I'm like, I don't know. Don't make my food. Make theirs first. I'll be back in 10 minutes. I just walk around the block and I come in. And then they're like, hi, I'm sorry about that. I'm like, why are you sorry? You're busy. I'm happy for you. And it's like, I don't have it in me to be a customer because after 10 or 12 or 14 hours sitting in this chair, answering phone calls from impatient people, dealing with inpatient people, like dealing with people with unrealistic expectations, I don't have it in me to inflict that on others. So it's one thing to be a customer when you don't have that experience. I understand when somebody acts like a customer, when, the, when, when, they're, when they're a retail customer paying a retail price. But when you actually run a service center and you know what it's like to deal with this petty shit back and forth, when you actually have a full understanding of both sides of the story, of both sides of the situation, and you still choose to be a customer anyway, I just think you're a piece of fucking subhuman scum. That's all there is to it. Because, like, I, again, when it comes to shit like this, like, I don't... Jesse and I argue every single day about everything there is to argue about under the sun. It's, it's just, it's, it's, like, it's like almost like a sport at this point, just to argue over almost everything there could be to argue about. But one thing that I'm not going to argue about is there's nobody, that I, there's nobody in this world that's more qualified to fix iPhone and iPad motherboards than her company. I've fixed boards on camera for iPhones and iPads before, and I've had people send me them. I have no idea why people are sending me this shit when they could be sending it to her. It makes no sense to me whatsoever, but is what it is. So again, when it comes to shit like this, just don't be a customer. It's bullshit.